it's pretty clear that personal computing plus the level of interconnection that we have with the contemporary internet is fertile ground for a huge outpouring of human creativity. And it's also a fantastic infrastructure for collective action. So if you've got a problem which can only be solved by the UN, you know, the internet doesn't sort of correct the UN or make it a better, but the UN is suddenly operating in an environment in which people can do online petitions or protests or or information or analysis or whatever it is. So it changes the environment in which these human institutions are working, perhaps for the good, perhaps it causes them unforeseen difficulties, you know, which, and suddenly they're, they're so preoccupied, you know, trying to sort of run parliament in an environment where everyone's scrutinizing MPs' expenses and that's the only news story. Maybe it causes them such short-term difficulties that it's harder to solve problems. But um, I guess I believe really strongly that that outpouring of human creativity and that opportunity for interconnectedness will make us better able to solve the sorts of large problems to which you refer. I mean, you could say the 7th of July bombings are the only things that tell us what society is like and therefore we should tap everyone's telephones and, and um, give everyone ID cards and, and uh, keep tabs on people as far as is humanly possible so that we can spot the next person who's going to do a bad thing. And if that's your, you know, the only perspective informing your decisions, you're going to create a pretty horrid world. But I think if you, you know, there's lots of evidence that the government is looking at the power of social networks. They're very inspired by the work of my society, the political effect of the petitions, the opening up of Hansard under They Work For You, things like net mums that you mentioned, um, they can see that there are places where people com are coming together and helping themselves. And they're starting to ask the question, you know, how can we go with that process without destroying it? I mean, it's possible to destroy it. There, there's an excellent you know, um, NHS feedback service called Patient Opinion. And because it's working, it would seem, you know, the government at the moment is proposing to commission at great expense a different service which won't be as good and which will destroy the market for the existing service which is there. That's obviously a dumb thing to do. So, um, but I, I'm hopeful that government will increasingly learn that it's helpful to recognise what's working well and to work with it. I mean, the, the, the people who've reacted most quickly to this change in the possibilities are unconstrained thinkers, they're NGOs. It doesn't require huge amounts of resources to get this right. So it's not surprising that the best examples have sprung out of nowhere effectively. And if government had to devise these and then commission and procure them, well, I mean, there's a long history of that and it doesn't work as well. Just where that point of balance will end up is, is, is hard to predict. I mean, I, I personally think that independent services for things like feedback are, are always going to be more trusted and more effective than officially run services where you always feel that the spin doctors could get hold of it and just sort of only produce the information that favours their point of view and this kind of thing.